coils around. Now the question now was, here was something never done before. There's no books, the electric board didn't really know what the hell I was doing. It's just a lump of heavy metal, some heavy rollers running around this plate. And yet they let you do it. They yes, said, they they said, did. Okay. yes, because I had the option, get out, shut up, or do it. And, and once I you had done it, they, they kind of backed off and said, well, this is interesting, let's see what happens. Yeah, and that's uh, it. And what we found out was that here, the way I was making the material up was a solid rod. But when we first tried, it twisted. So I thought to myself, how do you overcome this? And the dream would say eight. So I divided it into eight parts, then magnetized each section and put it up. Now it was running through around that ring. And it was off the bottom, and it was actually in the center running. Here we had something that one would expect would fall off. Uh, but from there, we just completed the whole unit. And that set the electric board for quite a few months. We didn't do nothing else with it. This roller and stuff kept running round and round, and nothing changed. But it, only the fact that it was always cold in that area. But from then on, I thought, well, the first ones were taken off. And we put it on the board here, try to see what happens. So I had to get an outside party to get those rollers moving. Once they were moving, that was it, really fast. I disconnected the power unit. And then the most amazing thing, I thought, well, we're going to have some electric now. Uh, but it was more amazing because it went up in the air, up just above the trees, and it hovered there. Now, we're talking about certainly about three to four kilos in weight. There it is up there, and suddenly it starts to glow colors. And, of course, we couldn't hear it. We were out away from radio set, so I didn't know if they were. But then suddenly, the major thing is, shot up. And now it shot up upwards. And as far as we know, it kept on going in that direction because even Sir Isaac Newton understood that if a force is applied to something, it continues in that straight line. Okay, John, John let, let's do this one more time slowly for James and his wonderful audience. Uh, you you kickstart this device with an outside power source. Yes. When the rollers achieve a certain speed, they don't need any more of the outside power so source, and it kicks off a switch. So now it's running on its own. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so as it's running on its own, what is it? It is speeding up? Yes. Okay, it's speeding up. Now, as it speeds up, it, this, there's a, this field that we were talking about before. The electrons are, are literally pouring out of this thing, correct? That's mm -hmm. correct. Now, when they, when they get to a, po a place that, let's call it an overload, then what happens? It, you're saying to us that it lifts? Lifts. It lifts it actually at speed. It lifts at speed. Yes. Now, this is roughly what diameter? This It's a disc, am I correct? Yes, yes. And what diameter is this? The disc? diameter of, of that particular one was uh, 12, uh, 12 inches. So we had sunny 12 inch, and it weighed 32 cent, uh, a kilo in weight. Now we got to think if we got a roller weighing about eight ounces, and it's sticking on there, and once I let go, it lifts off the roller that they play, and it then spins around the whole thing, and the roller is itself is spinning. Now, when I talked to some experts about what to do, what, they said, impossible, impossible. And they well, wouldn't even come and look at it. Yes, well, it sounds impossible because you're telling us that this disc-shaped generator overloads to a certain point and then lifts off. And you say when it lifted off, it goes to a certain height, height yeah. and then sits there and hovers for a bit. Now, what happens when it's sitting there in this hover thing? What What are you seeing? Well, we're seeing the glow gradually now building the, up. Okay, the glow. Now, yeah. we're, we're to assume that it's so filled with electrons that it looks electric. Is it making a noise? Is it... Well, there's, there's no, uh, no, no noise. noise. No noise. No. 
but you're seeing a color change. What yeah. what colors are you seeing? Well, you're going through. Uh, you don't get white, but you do get green and blue, depending how much voltage is raised before you earth it. Earthing it is when you're discharging it. Now, no, what we never expected was that it would suddenly shoot on. We just thought it would hang down and come back to earth. So it so it so it so it goes up. Yeah. So it, it hovers up, there. Up. What period of time are you watching it hover and change color? Well, we're looking, minute? At some, now we're looking about three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. And now, uh, do you think it's continuing to charge up higher and higher and higher yeah, and higher? higher and higher. So higher. you don't have any control over this charge. No. It's just going no. wild. This is it. And then it gets, to a, it gets to a place where gravity is no longer able to hold it or some effect is happening, and then suddenly it shoots off. What rate of speed are you watching this shoot-off action? Can you estimate how fast it shoots off? Well, let's say... You're looking at it for uh, uh, about three minutes while it's hovering, and then within a minute and a half, two minutes, it's out of sight. It's gone. It's completely out of sight. And gone. now, I remember when we were first in London together, and I asked you where did it go, and you just pointed up. Now, <laughs> that means you don't know where it went, but it you went that yeah, away. That away, yes. And it, as far as you know, it's still going. Well, uh, Sir Isaac Newton made it clear that. When something moves by force, it continues in that straight line. Now, so it's going to go. Now, to change that, you've got to apply a force to change it. But I, I can't fly, so I can't go up and stick a force on it to turn it. Right. Uh, so it will keep going. It's still going. And as far as I'm concerned, no one in the world ever contacted me to say, have you lost <laughs> a big lump green material with a, a roller type object bouncing around it. So it's still out there. What year did this one launch? Well, we, we uh, made one there when we were, talk, we were talking about here, late, uh, what was it, uh, 19, about 48, towards the end of 1948. Okay. And then you vis and then it, and then you had George Haynes come into your life, and there were six more that were launched oh, and yes. lost. Uh, what happened is. This poor man was dying of cancer, but he was highly religious, religious, and he listened to the Pope's message, message at night at, at 8 o'clock. I would go out to be polite. I would sit by him, and when the, uh, you know, this verse, Bible stuff was finished, uh, he turned to me and said, John, what's your interest? So I told him about this thing. John, if you can make people look up, I will pay the price, uh, the cost to do it, because everyone is looking down at the ground. Okay, so he's, he's, he called his son and said, take John on Wednesday to the big market, get everything he needs. So they did this, and of course the shed was built, I built what the unit, and of course I thought, now I've got time to see, I may solve the problem. So I did that. The thing was, I, could, I wasn't keeping it anywhere. I was wondering if it would stay there. So i just give it the usual spin up and then take the line away and it started going. And then it shot up above the house and it started going. But then was the most horrid part because it was discharging such vast energy, spreading out everywhere, hitting these copper wires from the Radio down to the back of the garden, and boy, that was a din of so that, noise. That's <clears throat> excuse me. That's when you're telling us about the the, the old long wave radio yeah. in World War II period when mm -hmm. everybody had a giant aerial running down their fence post. Yes, yes. So the literally the the electrons, this superconductor energy, was so intense that it traveled on these copper wires into the radio sets yeah. and immediately flipped them on whether you turned them on or not. Yeah, so all good. the radio stations in the area where you were fiddling around with this were all coming on and making a tremendous racket. Yes. Yeah, and how did the people around there react? They Obviously, they knew about Searle, what he was doing. They were watching you, correct? Yeah. Uh, but now they were looking at the sky. And all, and, so they were watching it. They yeah, were wa and watching they were watching it, it lift off. They saw these gone. colors. And they then everything went quiet. So I went up to... 
uh, George Haynes is there. I'm sorry. I've lost it. Did they look up? Good God, they sure did. And so this man who is ill with cancer, all he wants to do is make people look up. That's it. And he sees in your idea an opportunity to amaze people and get people to lift their heads to the heavens. Yeah. That's his whole Religion, notion. Yes. God and the heavens. Oh, isn't that marvelous? And yeah, so I've got a question. Building the, yeah. yeah no. I've got a quick question for you. Yep. Um, do you have any idea what the uh, RPM on that is when it's spinning? That's a very good question. John, is the, is, when, when it's activated and it's up in its first hover position, what, did, what do you estimate the RPM of the rollers, the inner and outer rollers? How fast are uh, they spinning? Uh, I would expect from day to day about 25,000 revs per minute. 25,000 uh -huh. RPM. Yeah. Now, is that the inner set inner, of rollers? Yes. Yeah. So the outer set of rollers would be at? That, well, the middle set is two and a half times the speed as we had side to Okay, 25,000 revs per minute yeah. on the inner set, yeah. two times that number on the middle set. Yeah. And on the final one, it's another two times. Another two yeah. times the center for yeah. the outer one. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. is tremendous That's activity. Good. Though they are uh, rollers, individual rollers, scientists always in their report said you've got a solid ring spinning around because they couldn't see. They were moving, they, understood, they were moving so fast they looked as if they were solid. Solid, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's astounding. Now you had these first six, George Haynes paid for them. Now he passes away, and then you start to explore uh, how to control them. Is that correct? That's you, correct. I couldn't do very much for the next few years until 1956. In 1956, I then had the first lot of money come in from old age pensioners. Eventually, I had 13 of them putting money in. But well, they made a condition, do not go commercial. We don't want any bother with the tax man. So what year are we talking about? We're talking about 19... 56. Okay, in, 19, in 1956, 57, yeah. 13 old age pensioners, that, those are guys who are basically retired and they have a little money and they, they, they're familiar with this man, Searle, who's doing these astounding experiments with a new type of generator device that is literally lifting off. And they just get together and say, hey, what a great idea. Let's, let's give this guy some money and see what he can really do. Is that the condition that was happening? Yes, yes. And so you were afforded through this investment the opportunity to explore this idea that you both came up with from your dreams and were able to bring forth into a reality that everyone saw. Now, the thing was that they only want a bit of fun, that old age people, <laughs> with nothing to do. If so could put something up there that frightens people, that would be fantastic. Long as he did not tell people that he was the one doing it. Well, the, the records show I was very successful at frightening people. Now, now let's get into that. Now, now apparently at one point you learned to control these. Now, let's tell let's tell uh, James and his audience how big. First, let's, how many discs did you build? Well, when we had to pack up completely, there was 41 discs built. 41. Number one was the 41st disc. 41 flight vehicles. Now, these were, uh, over the years, you had learned how to control them. Is that correct? Right, yes. And you learned to control them through an ability uh, that we understand you sent signals to the craft using ham-operated radio. Is that correct? Yes. We couldn't use uh, what we call uh, radio aircraft model type because the object moved too fast and would run at the range that the these uh, portable things would do. So you had to have the higher frequencies yeah. of the ham yeah. operations yeah. and it had to pass in front because it was yeah. moving so fast. Yeah. Now tell us about, now you sent a signal, uh, what happened to that signal? It went to the craft and did what? But uh, what it goes through is an uh, encoder, decoder circuit, and that would do either turn the flight sail to change the angle of flight so that it'd take a new path. Now, to do that, I could do that part from my house. To send it out a long distance, 
you do have to have have, have operators. They have to have the same equipment as 